Hello and welcome to episode 5 in a series of walking guides for the highest mountains in Scotland. In today's video there's going to be a lot of this and some of this. Ben Vorlich is one of the shorter Monroe walks and I'll start by covering the route on the OS Maps website and as always a link to this route and to the weather report are included in the description below. I'll then show you the actual route in time lapse with some commentary from the walk. The total distance for today's walk is 13 kilometres and the total ascent is 937 metres. The walking time is around 5 hours. We start at the Inverroo Glass Car Park and there is a fairly large car park. It is a pay and display car park and there are also public toilets. This car park can be busy in the summer months. Inverroo Glass is around 35 miles or 56 kilometres from Glasgow Airport and it takes just under an hour to drive there from the airport. The walk up Ben Vorlich is fairly straightforward. The route is well worn and with the exception of the wintry weather it's easy to follow. There is one section that is dangerous due to crevasses that have opened up across the main path and there are recent signs of landslides as you'll see in the video. So you need to take care when you're traversing that section of the path. So starting at the car park, if you're walking you'll leave the car park and cross the road and then follow the path, the footpath that goes up the side of the road. At this point here the path will go around a derelict building and you'll come out onto another road and at this point you want to keep to the left and then it'll join you back up to the main road and you follow the path up along the main road. Come to a junction and you'll be able to see a viaduct where the railway track crosses over the road and this is the way you want to go. You'll go through a gate, there's actually two gates that you can go through and then that'll take you onto the hydro path. If you're walking you can cut the corner of this big loop here, you can just go up through the woods and if you're cycling follow the road and follow up the road. You then just keep following this road, you avoid any of the, the sort of junctions or the, the roads that go off to the side and just keep following that main path, main road, all the way up. And you keep going and just keep following that road. Eventually you'll come to this point and you'll be able to see in the distance the reservoir dam and as you're walking up here you'll see on your right hand side a set of very clear steps made out of rock and those steps go up and you follow up the side of the mountain it gets it's quite steep and quite a continuous incline so you follow the path up once you've got to here it'll start to turn to the left it's still steep but you notice that you're not going sort of straight up the mountain as much and then it'll go along a bit and then around about this area here so we're at 700 meters around this point is where there are some large crevasses and the, the land has slipped and these have opened up directly under the path so you have to I went around them just a little bit to the right but just be careful keep following the path up you do walk along the edge and you can get a good view down to the dam if it's clear and you keep going up and along and, and it doesn't really show it here but you're actually going like in a valley it's not a big valley but you're going along a, a valley in at the top so there's a there's higher ground to the left of you and higher ground to the right of you and you're not going up on the actual ridge and you keep following that at this point you get a choice you can go straight ahead or you can go right there's two paths they're both clear to see even in the snow I went to the right because the wind was coming from the left and it gave me a little bit more protection from the wind and when you come up to this point this is the trig point it's not the actual summit and you can see that's at 941 meters and then the true summit is at 943 meters and you're going on about another 180 meters or so I returned via the same path that I went up. On another day you could go down this way and I have done that. You can come down here and keep going down this way. This path, this road here, it's like a Range Rover track, it does continue on. So then you can join that path, that road and, follow, and then follow that back out and it joins up to here. 
thing to be careful of is there is a railway track here, so you want to come back out that path and then join the path that you joined on the way in. And if you were like me, you come just back down the same path you went up. It's quite an easy path to come down, the steps are good. And back down to the road. I brought a bicycle in this walk, so from this point you, you just sat on your bike and just coasted all the way back down to the car park. As always, I checked a weather report. This time I've downloaded it as a PDF because I was checking it on my mobile phone. And so I downloaded it in a PDF version so that I can show it here. The weather was going to be quite windy and it looked like it would be nicer in the morning, less wind in the morning, so I had an early start. There's going to be some snow and some rain and it's saying there's going to be heavy later on. So again, I tried to do it in the morning and get down before the afternoon. Not much chance of it being clear, 10%. And if you're in the direct wind, you know, it could be around minus 12 or feel like minus 12 degrees. So you've got to make sure you've got the right clothing, waterproofs that are windproof that keep the wind out and that helps. Well, good morning. It's 7.20 in the morning. I'm at the Inverroo Glass car park. Just got to figure out, it's a pay and display car park. They've also got toilets, looks like they're open. It's very wet. Pay and display takes cash and card. Parking charges are between 8am and 9pm, but it's £4 for the full day. So the first pay machine wasn't working, at least not with the card. There is a second pay machine in the other half of the car park, so we'll try this one. So fortunately the second machine is working, just waiting for the ticket to get printed. It's now quarter past eight in the morning. I waited a little bit, it was pouring down with rain. I've got my bike, well I say my bike, it's actually my wife's bike, but I've got her mountain bike. You can cycle up to the dam, so it takes you know a couple of kilometres off the walk. It's now nice and calm. It's a bit cloudy up there, I'm not expecting much visibility today. So I'm going to cycle up the first section. Nice and calm at the moment. Got a nice atmospheric shot of the mountain. And there's the dam. We should be approaching the start of the real walk on the right hand side just ahead. So here I am at the start of where you turn off from the road and go up the mountainside. There is a a nice stream here so you can fill up. Just leaving the bike at the side. And it's even got a little signpost. So if you look at the map, we are here and it's a very steep climb up. We're at about 200 meters at the moment and it's a steep climb all the way up to about yeah, six 50, yeah probably 750, 750 meters and then it gets a lot easier as you go along the ridge to the top. It's not a long walk and a nice day you get good views. I don't think we're going to get much today.
it's a steep, st steep slog to get up there. This might be the last view before we get back down. I had just entered the cloud, but it's now blowing up the hill. about a hundred meters of ascent until it sort of flattens off and it's about half a kilometer of walk. You can still see right down to the valley but we are just now entering the cloud. slightly tricky little rocky craggy section there's a lot of crevasses I would be very careful and wary of standing on the snow the way it is just now some big drops these cracks that are in the mountainside To avoid the deep snow, I went a bit to the left and got up onto the ridge. I don't want to go any further that way. So I want to go straight along this way. And it's fairly level to the top. So it's 160 meters of ascent to the top and 1.25 kilometers in that direction. Back on the path, the wind's really started to pick up. I've just got some protection with this little bit of hillside. About a kilometre to the top. Visibility is about 70 metres. meters from where the last was and the wind's quite a bit less, it's still windy. Better be quick, there's some blue sky there. Moment. 
come to this trick point, this is not the summit, the summit point. So this is me at the, the true summit, there's a little bit of a cairn, the wind has really picked up, you're probably going to get a lot of wind noise. Visibility coming by. There's been a couple of blue sky openings in the way up, but not very much. Good right behind, behind this rock here, I think. Oh, that's much better. A little mat and a little polystyrene foam nail premium, whatever it is, mat. So you can sit on the snow or on the wet. Get your bum all wet. Just to sit my rucksack. So in front of me, there is Loch Lomond. So that's the way I'm pointing towards Loch Lomond and Ben Lomond in that general direction and down there there's an amazing natural infinity pool and when you're in the infinity pool it looks over to Loch Lomond so it's quite spectacular if I hadn't brought a bike I may have walked out that way to show you but I've got some photographs from a past trip so I'll add them in now these were taken when the first lockdown after Covid was eased and you weren't allowed to travel from overnight away but you could go away for the day so I travelled up and climbed up Ben Varley but I did it via the ridge didn't follow the path at all came up the full bridge and then went back off towards the pond um, keeping away from the crowds just to do something different and there's a little bit of blue sky coming through maybe hang around a little bit at the top for about 10 or 15 minutes, had something to eat and drink, the wind's not dying down, the sun's not coming out, that's the cairn just there and my hands are starting to really get cold so I need to put my gloves back on and I'm just going to head back off the mountain.
some white ptarmigan. I don't know if you'll be able to pick them make it out. There you go. There's a second one. Ben Narnane is in the cloud in the centre and then right in the centre now is the, the BLAC between Ben Narnane and Ben Emi and then you've got Ben Vane. You can do the three of them in a loop, it's about 14 miles and 21 kilometres. I've done it once that way. It's much easier coming down, especially once you get below the snow and ice line, then it's just a straightforward walk downhill. Just as I get to the last few steps, the rain's come back on. I'll need to get my waterproof jacket and trousers on, unlock the bike and then coast down the hill. Inverruglas car park and that's Loch Lomond. If you like this video and you want to see more, please subscribe and please like. Thank you. Thumbs up for the toilet block, hot water and Dyson hand dryers. Really good. <laughs>